Hey, my name is Sweeper3D and I am a freelance 3D artist. I use Blender as my primary tool to create all of my artworks. And generally I like to focus on large scale fantasy environments. So things like castles, giant fantasy trees, and just like large scale forest scapes in general. So to create these large scale environments with heavy detail, it does require a really powerful system. So to create all of these artworks that you see here, as well as the one that I'm creating for this video, that has been made using an RTX 3090, which has absolutely been an amazing card. It handles everything I've thrown at it and allowed me to create really anything that I've wanted to without any struggle. And I did actually recently switch to an RTX 5090 for my new build that I made after this render actually. And this card has actually been so insane. It's mind blowing what it can do and how fast it is and just what it can handle so far. This is going to be super fun to use and just kind of see what I can do with my renders and how much bigger I can make my worlds with this card. So yeah, moving on to the project that we're going to be creating for this video series. So throughout this video series, we're going to be creating this render that you see here. So throughout each section, we're going to be covering a different part of this process. So like building the castle, building the floating island, sculpting out the environment, adding scatter systems, detailing, rendering, post-processing, and just creating this render in general. So I recorded the entire process of me creating this. And throughout these videos, I'm just going to narrate over what I'm doing and just kind of giving you tips and tricks on things that I do during my process and what you guys can do as well to have an easier time creating things like this yourself. All right, so right now I'm starting out with a castle. I'm just kind of going through my asset library of assets I've made previously and just trying to figure out the initial design of this. I'm also moving the camera not into like a final composition or anything, but I generally find it's helpful to move the camera into at least a place similar to what you think you might be using for the final composition. This just gives you a better idea of kind of what you might need for the castle or whatever you're building to look good from that angle that you're going to be using for the render. I'm also building from the top down, as you can see, as opposed to starting from the bottom up. And I find this to be a lot easier because generally castles have a lot less detail and assets on the very top and the bottom has way more. There's a lot more to figure out. So I find starting at the top where I can just place one asset at a time and kind of build down and gradually get more and more complex to be much easier. That way I have like a little bit less I have to worry about in the beginning. And then I can just start kind of, you know, pulling ideas from what I have already and making it bigger and bigger. Right now, I'm just placing around some of my steep slanted roofs now, seeing where I can put these. And this is just kind of to break up the uh, like the repetition of the kind of like steep 90 degree angles that we have all over. This is just kind of nice to add just because now we have a nice variation now. And also, I just really like seeing the roofs. Generally, I use some sort of blue, sometimes like a grayish blue or red. And I just really like seeing a lot of roofs on castles. So wherever I can kind of add them, I do. Right now, I'm also placing some more kind of tall window blocks around as well, but I'm kind of messing with different angles as well. So this is one thing I like to do if I already have some assets placed around in 90 degree angles, as you can see that we have at the top, I'll start kind of messing with different angles, like 25 degree angles, 45 degree angles, and kind of rotating them around the castle and also messing with symmetry too. So if I do one thing on one side, I'll probably do it on the other side. And sometimes I'll like to do them in corners as well, as you can see. So I find just working with symmetry, finding different patterns that look really cool, really helps with the kind of structure of castles and makes it just makes it look much more interesting and realistic. So this is one thing that I do a lot in castles. I just kind of figure out different patterns I can use and ways I can repeat that pattern over and over again. And I'm also using the 3D cursor transform pivot point, which makes it really easy to evenly rotate those assets around the center of the castle. So you can get that symmetry very easily. So this is one thing that I do very frequently with castles. I just keep the origin point in the very center, which allows me to just rotate those anytime I need to very easily and very quickly. So this cylinder too, that's in the very center, that's just kind of a plain white basic cylinder right now. It's a block out. That's going to be replaced with like a wall or something like that. So that's just kind of me blocking out what's going to be there later on and kind of figuring out the initial shape. So I'm using this asset for the bottom of the castle. I'm going to be rotating it around in just a second and adding a few more. So I'm using this asset because it's, well, it's got a door, it's got a lot of detail, and it's also a very large asset too. It just kind of feels like a really good asset to be used as the very bottom of the castle or somewhere near the bottom. And right here, I'm also blocking out some more kind of like walls that I'm going to be using for the bottom of the castle. So in a lot of cases, when I'm making castles, I like to kind of surround them with like vegetation, trees, and just other things like that. 
So the idea I have right now is that bottom row is going to have just a bunch of scattered trees, most likely. This is just one thing I like to do with a lot of my castles. I really love vegetation, forests, and just greenery in general. So wherever I can add that into my scenes, I do. At this point, I am pretty much done with the castle. All of the big major assets are taken care of, and now it's time to kind of go through with some smaller assets and just mess around with placement of that and try to just add to the overall shape, design, and just make this feel a little bit more interesting to look at. So of course, when I'm doing this, I'm messing with symmetry still, trying to find cool patterns that I can use when placing these assets around. And also one other thing too is don't just look at like all of the detail together on the structure that you're making. It also helps to kind of ignore all of the inner detail and just focus on the entire like silhouette of the castle too in like the overall shape. And that really helps me kind of figure out exactly what I need to do as well, like just kind of what types of assets to place. And what I came up with right here is I really needed some like steep spire roofs around the castle. So I'm just kind of incorporating this to the end of the A-frame rooftops. And I thought this looked really cool. Of course, you can kind of see the windows are kind of clipping through the roof a little bit in like a weird way. It's a little bit messy, but this is going to be viewed from a far distance. So it doesn't actually really matter. You won't actually be able to see that kind of weird detail. But for any scene that you're going to actually be viewing something like this up close, definitely make sure to take care of those kind of messy parts because that is definitely important if you're going to be seeing it up close. And right here, I'm adding these assets around the castle as well for the same reason of the rooftops. They, uh, I just need some more kind of sharp spire-like detail just around the castle. So I'm just kind of incorporating these in a different way too and just trying to position these just so I can use the 3D cursor transform pivot point to rotate this around the castle evenly. So right here, I'm grabbing the top face and I'm basically deleting the face of it and keeping just the edges. And I'm going to convert this to a curve so I can actually make a circular array with the wall assets. So this is going to be using an array modifier and a curve modifier with this curve circle as the curve object. As you can see, it's very simple to do. And all I'm just doing right now is positioning this into place, scaling down the wall asset, and just trying to get this lined up perfectly with the block out walls that I have. I figured this detail actually wasn't what I wanted for the wall. So right here, I just actually swapped out the wall asset and I'm just repositioning this into place now, just like I had before. I didn't actually finish the entire rotation just because we're not going to see the backside. So I figured I might as well just kind of conserve as many polys as I can, try to keep it lower poly if possible, just because it won't really matter. I'm not going to see that anyways. So right here, I'm just kind of duplicating this now, trying to position this into place for each of these walls. Um, these top ones right here are a bit taller, so I actually made this a separate object and I'm just selecting all of the bottom vertices only and extending those down so it's a bit taller and fits more into place. So same thing here, this one's even taller, just did the exact same thing. And that's pretty much it for the actual asset part of the castle. So now what I'm doing is I'm going through and swapping the materials. So for this, I basically decided to choose the tan brick material to be the main one. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going through all the assets that don't have that same material, swapping those materials, and then correcting the UVs. And the UVs that I'm doing are very simple. They're I'm just cube projecting the assets basically, and I'm just scaling the cube projection until the bricks are at least close enough. So as I mentioned a couple times, this is going to be viewed from far away. So making things super perfect up close isn't as important. It's of course important to make it look good up close, but it's not 100% necessary to make it absolutely perfect for this type of detail, just because we're not going to notice this from far away. As long as it's close enough, you won't really be able to tell the difference. So yeah, just going through the final assets and this is essentially it for the castle. So that wraps it up for this first section of the video series. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to NVIDIA Studio's YouTube channel so you guys can stay tuned for their future videos. And in the next section of the series, we're going to be creating the floating rock structure underneath the castle. So I'll see you guys there.